Watch the scary moment this thief steals from Walmart, then dashes out the door with desperation written all over his face. He's breathing hard, running into what appears to be a chaotic parking lot with many cars pulling away from the scene quickly as a result of an earlier gunshot. Watch as he tries to carjack the first man who drives off. With his second attempt, he's almost successful, but the tenacious car owner wouldn't give way and try as he could, the thief is unable to dislodge the car owner from his car. He runs off on foot, realizing that the longer he struggles, the more chances he allows for the nemesis to catch up with him. I'm certain he'll manage to steal a car. His darting hat and furtive eyes say as much. While big fires are terrifying on their own, little ones inside the store can be just as unsettling. The scary part of this is the lack of evacuation or response. For what feels like an inordinate amount of time, no one seems to be doing anything about this fire. It continues to rage on. Dude, get out of here. Yeah, um, let's go this way. Right. <laughs> because we don't see the source of the flames, it looks like the shelves have decided to spontaneously combust in the middle of a weekday. <laughs> Nearly a full filmed minute goes by before anything really starts happening. The signs and displays are falling apart and suddenly an employee comes through from the back. Perfectly on time, really, given that the fire was starting to get a bit larger and potentially growing out of control. This cameraman caught the whole situation, including the charred remains of the Walmart end cap that it left behind. Why are robbers always in a gang? Because they need partners to carry the loot with greater ease. Just watching her struggle with that television, I'm absolutely certain she'd like to have a partner in crime right about now, and for Pete's sake, where is everybody? She should have been caught the first time the trolley rolled back, but no, she goes again and again, trying to roll out, failing and trying again and again until she made her way out of the store, her stolen loot right behind her. Yes, A for effort. It's an F- minus for the security personnel at this Walmart, and here's to hoping she doesn't smash it before she gets to her destination. It almost sounds like I'm rooting for this thief. Definitely not. Watch as the man in a pink top browses through the battery section of this Walmart store. There's a voice in the background urging the individual to go get a job, almost like the speaker has guessed the man's intent. He soon grabs a battery and takes off on a quick run towards the exit. He puts his shoulder hard against the door, forcing it open and rushing out into the street. He doesn't look like a car owner though, not with the apparent desperation in his clothing and general body language. Does this mean he's stealing the battery with a buyer lined up and waiting already? Your guess is as good as mine. We don't know if he was caught, but considering he didn't use any protective covering or disguise, the cameras must have got his face from a different angle. Police received a call from a customer at Walmart who claimed they saw a man attempting to steal electronics and threatening people with a rifle. We are in the Walmart store on Cincinnati Dayton Road and there is a man threatening to shoot people with a gun in his hand. Police arrived on scene on high alert, thinking that the attempted robbery would turn violent. It was the Walmart with clarification sending male white man wearing a white shirt and red pajama pants. However, when they arrived, they found Walmart security escorting the man out. The man was only trying to return a rifle BB gun that he had bought for his grandson a week ago. Because he didn't return the gun in the packaging he bought it in, customers were concerned because of the rifle's extremely realistic appearance. The first sign of guilt is a quick race at the sight of law enforcement agents. This maxim is not always true, but many times the guilty man runs at the sight of the police. Just like the man in this video, his bear spray in hand, his load tossed to make his escape less cumbersome and his feet swinging quickly into action to put some distance between himself and the police the moment he heard them call out to him. You immediately wonder why he took off so quickly and what he might be suspected of. From the bear spray in his hand, we can guess vandalism, but it appears he's also a robber and the little package he dumped to the side of the police might well be a tent he stole from Walmart. I wonder what would possess him to steal a tent, but then people steal the worst things and this guy is no exception. He didn't manage to escape. Whether it's down to his slowness or the fact that he didn't see the police coming, he'll have to pay for his crime. Watch as these officers stop this black jeep whose occupants are suspected of shoplifting. At first, you're certain that the occupants are innocent or at least have managed to stash whatever they'd stolen so well that they were confident nothing would come up to bite them in the back. Right. You're being a pain right now for shoplifting, okay? I didn't stop shoplifting. Listen, I'm explaining it to you right now. You're being a pain for shoplifting, so we're going to talk about it, right? Take over here by my car. 
There are two ladies. The innocent looking lady in red who seems surprised at what the officers were saying. She's apologetic too and I didn't miss that quick stare she shot her companion immediately shoplifting was mentioned. You are being detained for shoplifting, that's why we're here, okay? The woman in red is agitated, making us think she might actually be innocent of the crime, but is there something off with the other lady's demeanor? Is she a little too calm? Matters escalate very quickly when she says something to the officer in front of her about getting something from the car. She's led back to the vehicle and for a moment she acts like she's trying to pick out something inside the car. She's crafty about it too, and when she sees her moment, she kicks the car to life and makes a run for it. The officers tried to stop her, but couldn't, and she tears off, slamming first into the police car, backing up to find room for her daring escape. What follows is a high-octane car chase that ends in her capture. It's hard to tell when someone is making a serious threat and when you might be making a leap in logic. Fortunately, this woman's threat was taken seriously as she was approached by a police officer wearing a body cam. The officer, an off-duty fish and wildlife conservation officer, collects her and her son and escorts them out of the store. Ma'am, officer, I was for the fish and wildlife. Do you mind stepping out front with me? She apparently had established a pattern of cray behavior, making verbal threats of violence in public, sometimes saying she would blow the place up if she wasn't given money. Go ahead and put your phone down, your purse down in the lighter. Yes. Go ahead and put it down right now. She had a past of amphetamine use, known to have hallucinations, which likely fueled her many threats. So the reason you're in handcuffs right now is for the mason jar filled with nails and kerosene no, that mine. you constructed. Okay. If there was something like that, it wasn't mine. Okay, well they have video of you putting that together. <laughs> Listen, it wasn't me. When she's taken into custody, the woman is loaded into the back of the cop car. Her cart had been full of questionable materials, leading them to believe these threats may not have been threats after all. Well, I swear if you break my window or dent my truck, then you're gonna have additional charges. You realize you just kicked the door into my wrist. <laughs> A business establishment should be in peak physical condition and pose no health hazard. When it's a relatively new Walmart, you expect better buildings than adherence to safety requirements, but watch this part of the wall in the Walmart store caving in on itself. Imagine someone driving into the parking lot in the moment the roof begins to fall, landing on your car, windshield, or in the moment when you just stepped out of your car. Brand stinking new building, freaking caving, almost killing people. I hope nobody got hurt or died because there's a parking spot and this could have happened any shopping hours, during any shopping hours. This health scare shouldn't be, especially for a relatively new building. Look at those carts sitting under the wreck. I wonder what they're there for. We're still leaving the wreck there and not handling it quickly might not be saying the best thing about this store, but what do I know? <laughs> in this video, a car starts burning in the parking lot of a Walmart. It's unclear why the car caught fire, but it starts to grow fast. Two men who appear to have been inside the car when it caught fire are backing away from the flames. The man taking the video asks the owner of the car if they're okay, to which they answer that they have thousands of dollars worth of tools inside the vehicle. The vehicle starts popping and something explodes inside. He knows what's in his truck. Yeah, but he's... The fire gets even bigger. Are you okay? Hey, get away from the truck, man! Luckily, firefighters arrive at the scene and start handling the situation, but it looks to be too late for the truck and all the tools inside. Though many people have claimed that their local Walmart store is haunted, this couple got actual proof to back up their claim. The two were out shopping at their local Walmart store. They got their things and came out. Suddenly, they heard what sounded like a scream coming from behind the building, so they went to investigate the source. They didn't find anything, so they decided to record a video about the weirdness of the situation. Hi, me and my boyfriend were shopping at Walmart, and then on our way out we heard some weird sounds, and now we're over here investigating, trying to figure out what it was. In the video, as the woman starts talking about the incident, the shopping cart behind her starts moving on its own. Babe? An older gentleman? What the f***? What? Are you serious? Now, if it had started moving in one specific direction, we could have attributed it to the wind. But the cart moved in a circular motion. When the couple moved towards it to check it out, the cart moved further away. Yeah, I mean, I, there's nothing weird with it. I, I don't see nothing weird with the cart at all. What the f- hold on. Hold on a second, what? Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Is it moving? Oh. 
This happened a couple of times until the couple were so freaked out that they decided to not sate their curiosity and leave the cart be. Honestly, we can't blame them. Had it been us in their place, we would have abandoned the cart at the first sight of it moving on. When six-year-old Faith Swetlick returned home from school on the 10th of February, 2020, it was only 2.50 p.m. The sun was out and the day was beautiful, leading her mother, Selena Collins, to allow the little girl some time to play in the sun. That will prove to be a fatal mistake, as the little girl was nowhere to be found an hour later. What happened to her? Here's Cody Taylor, the man believed to have abducted and killed little Faye. When Faye's mother notified the police that her daughter was missing, an immediate search of the neighborhood began. It wasn't just the outdoors. The homes of the neighbors were searched as well, including the home of Cody Taylor who became the main suspect in Faye's disappearance. Here's Cody Taylor walking to the local Walmart store where she'd made some purchases. His roommate mentions that he had sprayed some sort of deodorizing spray in the house, and one might say that he purchases the spray on this trip to Walmart. Keep your eyes on the top right hand of the screen to find Taylor. By the time Taylor was walking to Walmart, he had already murdered Faye and left the victim in a laundry bag in his home. While he took that long walk to the mall, the police searched his apartment with permission from his roommate but found nothing. Reports showed that they'd noticed the laundry bag but didn't think so much of it. For three days, the search raged on with nothing to show for it. The police kept visiting Taylor's home to question it and it's believed to have spooked him, forcing him to bury Faye in the woods close to the house. Here's light captured in the woods on the night Taylor buried Faye's body. He's believed to have purchased some soil at the Walmart store. Again, you can see Taylor spending some time in the woods just after he returned from the mall. Director Snell Grove discovered Faye's body on that same area of the woods where we just saw Taylor spend some time at night and the morning after he returned from the Walmart. To this day, nobody knows why Taylor did it. By the time the police returned to question him, he had stabbed himself in the neck. While cosplaying is all fun and games and a way of artistic representation, dressing up as a clown and chasing people around a parking lot crosses the line into the creepy zone. Police received reports of a man dressed up as a clown chasing people around the parking lot of a Walmart store in Coeta County. The police arrived at the scene to investigate and saw a man dressed in a checkered clown costume with makeup and a mask. He claimed he was doing it in the spirit of Halloween, which was just around the corner and that people had been coming up to him to take pictures with him. The eyewitnesses on the scene told another story altogether. They claimed that Barry Allen Byram had been chasing them, trying to scare them. One woman was so petrified she couldn't get out of her car. The police arrested Byram for disorderly conduct. Byram told the police that it wasn't a crime to scare people. It was a mystery what went inside Byram's head before he attempted such a thing, but let's hope none of us ever encounter a clown in any parking lot. Vigilantes look really cool in shows and movies, but in real life, they're rare. And even more rare are they good. But in this case, the woman who became a vigilante did it out of pure good intentions. A woman was out shopping at Walmart when she noticed a group of delinquents enter the store, grab a couple of things, and then walk out without paying for them. They would have gotten away with it too, had the woman not decided to take justice into her own hands. As the delinquents got into their car, she jumped on top of the Porsche and stomped on the windshield. 
That didn't deter the delinquents in any way as they drove away and the woman had to hastily jump off the car. But her actions were enough for the police to identify the car through the CCTV footage. The police were able to arrest the criminals and the woman was appreciated for her bravery. When questioned about her motives behind her actions, the woman replied that she was so repulsed by their actions she couldn't help but try to intervene and make them stop. Such people restore our faith in humanity and the goodness of the human heart. Have you witnessed a free-for-all? Usually physical altercations like this tend to leave very undesirable outcomes and it gets worse when it occurs in a public place packed with edible and non-edible products like a Walmart. In this Walmart aisle, a group of five to six people are going at it with each other. One woman in particular whips out pepper spray and unleashes the contents on others, including children. A police officer soon arrives on the scenes, tasked with putting an end to the disorderliness. The officer grabs one of the ladies involved, handcuffing her while the ladies yell and try and excuse the behavior. They appear to be sisters as you can hear them scream in the video. The first sister is arrested without incident, with only a little yelling and resistance from her sister. When the police attempt to arrest the other siblings, she resists, forcing the officers to apply some force. There's a lot of yelling and hollering as she wrestles with the arresting cop. Her resistance brings the cop to push her to the ground. Seeing that play out, both sisters begin to struggle, causing goods to be scattered and the piece of the store to deteriorate further. The resistance from the sisters is perfectly captured here. They kick, struggle, and do everything else but comply with the cops. One shopper in the store can be seen yelling at the cop who has one of the sisters pinned to the ground, his knees pressed against her leg while she's face down on it. The most painful moment is, possibly, when one of the ladies bites the police officer who reacts instantly. Everything is chaotic, the tussle, the yelling, and the sheer anger displayed by the women mean that the police don't have the easiest time taking them from the store to their cruiser. They push to the ground one more time before they exit the store. The cops involved were cleared of all wrongdoings as the police cited their right to defend themselves and to act in situations like this. The last thing you want to deal with in a public place is someone following you. Maybe you've been in this situation, and maybe it's a slightly uncomfortable but easily explained mistake. However, this woman continued walking around Walmart when she realized she had someone tailing her around the store. This isn't some ill-informed employee, but rather a good case of this woman being very concerned for her own safety. It went on for about half an hour, and at the end of the video, she's advised by loss prevention to not leave the store alone. At least inside the store, she can keep herself safe around other people. In the parking lot, not so much. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. You see that guy behind me? Mm -hmm. He's been following me for like 30 minutes. I don't know if he's lost a picture or something. He's been following me for the last Okay, then let me have the picture. Okay, I'll get uh, them on the camera. All right. I'm You're just good. Like, I'm a little Yeah, so don't leave the deal then. I'm gonna go take a picture. He is not lost prevention. Safety first. Honestly, you never really know what people are gonna do. Danger is everywhere around us. That much has been proven with all the evil you see on the news networks advocating circumspection in every aspect of your life. This woman keeps her eyes open while shopping with her daughter at this Walmart store and the things she saw terrified her. She notices a man following them and taking pictures and reacts quickly by making a video of him. I don't know him. He's following me and recording me. She calls the attention of a shop attendant and a store manager who both agree that the man's behavior is definitely creepy, but by this time, the man in question was gone. The bone-chilling information this woman finds through Google about the man in the video will send more chills down your spine. I shared the video and the photos on TikTok. I posted it locally, and he has been identified. He is a uh, registered sex offender. He's a class one registered sex offender, and her proactivity means that the criminal has been placed on the radar of the police officers. Nicholas Cruz is the infamous 19-year-old who opened fire on students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School on the 14th of February, 2018. In that heartbreaking incident, Cruz killed 17 people and injured a further 17. He escaped with the help of the chaos he created, simply blending in with the crowd of students who were fleeing the scene of the carnage. But he didn't get the clean getaway he wanted. He was arrested only an hour later at nearby Coral Springs. Here's the trial video of Nicholas and the man on stand currently testifying as Carlos Rogeles, a manager at a subway. On the day of Nicholas's infamous massacre, Carlos was working at a subway in the Walmart at Coral Springs. 
The Walmart's just a short distance away from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. So Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018, how long had you worked at that, that uh, subway? Would be six or seven years. Okay. And did, there, did they have a surveillance system? Did they have a surveillance system? Yes. When you were working there on uh, Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018? Yes. What, what, how did the system work? It would record the cameras by motion, I believe. Okay. And uh, how did you uh, operate the system? Yeah. All right. And you were familiar with the system? Yes, I'm not. Okay. Uh, there would come a time uh, where uh, you viewed uh, what happened uh, on the afternoon of February uh, 14, 2018. Yes. Okay. And have you reviewed uh, that video? Yes. And does that video truly and accurately depict you and someone that you uh, served at that subway inside Walmart? Yes. Okay. Let me show you uh, State's Exhibit. Carlos Regalas had served Nicholas Cruz at Subway shortly after the killer opened fire and ran off. Nicholas walks into the subway and up to the desk where Carlos is on duty in a green shirt and hat. The killer ordered an icy, got it, and walked off like another normal human being on another normal day. Do you remember when you were serving him? Uh, he wanted an icy mixed. It was a cherry and a blue raspberry. While Nicholas looked pretty calm ordering an icy, he's a little tense as you can see from his body movement, his unsteady hands and his head which he kept down and hidden away from the security cameras. What were you just giving him then? His change. Receipt? Yeah. Nicholas was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole after the jury was deadlocked on a death penalty. What makes a man leave the wide roads to plow with a destructive force into a business establishment? There are many theories. It could be drunkenness, anger, or just reckless driving. Take your pick. Whatever you believe can apply here as this truck driver simply crashed in through the glass doors and continued on for a few seconds before finally finding a force it couldn't move and coming to an abrupt stop. Police were quickly dispatched to check out the situation and discovered the cause of the crash. Let's hope the insurance can cover all the damages we see as his truck tears through the aisle. Only thankful there were no customers in the store when this bit of madness occurred. In our last installment, you must have seen a video where close to 200 people or more rushed into a Walmart and proceeded to vandalize and loot the establishment. Here we have a much smaller number of people. This time they're a small number of shoplifters with as much of a damaging force as the 200. Watch as 22 miscreants rush in quickly, jumping over the counter and making straight for the best goods in the store. Television sets, car batteries, and masks were among the goods carted away by these shoplifters. Their total loot is reported to be over $7,700. It's heartbreaking watching them sneak out the windows with these goods, moving in with a certain precision that suggests they're all in cahoots and didn't just randomly meet outside this Walmart. It appears to be a pre-planned event as the thieves appear to be coordinated in their entrance as well as exit. They were also said to have sped away in about 20 different cars, which lends credence to our thoughts about the organized nature of their shoplifting spree. The police are on the lookout, but I doubt if any of these miscreants would be apprehended, especially since they all appear to be wearing face masks. Masks. I've seen thieves with great confidence, but this particular thief is either stupid or he has a subconscious wish to be arrested. He had robbed a Walmart store earlier. Watch as he pulls a knife at the loss prevention officer trying to keep him from leaving the store with a stolen product. Honestly, I wish those four people there had grabbed him and tossed him to the ground in spite of his weapon, but it's probably a good thing they let him go since justice was waiting not so far away, and of course, no one knows how dangerous a physical confrontation could get. A police officer spots him walking casually by a few blocks from the Walmart store and quickly swings into action. The overly confident thief still reaches into his pocket, but the police officer's warnings dissuaded him from any thoughts of violence. He was finally arrested and cuffed, but look closely. Do you notice any anomaly? It might just be me, but something is just off. Maybe it's just me. When a man tried to steal groceries from Walmart, he probably wouldn't have thought that the person who had thwarted his plans would be a 73-year-old woman. 
In the video, the guy recording asked the shoplifter if he's really going to steal the cart full of groceries. You gonna pay for that? The man recording knows the thief plans to walk out, stealing what appears to be hundreds of dollars worth of product. The shoplifter is wearing a ski mask, so it's impossible to identify him, and he continues to head towards the exit. However, an old lady realizes what he's doing and blocks the exit with her cart. Before the shoplifter can even react, the woman reaches up and rips off the ski mask, leaving the man's face in full view on the recording. <laughs> The shoplifter abandons the groceries he was trying to steal and gets on his bike and rides away. Because the old lady ripped his mask off, police were able to identify him. How many cop-involved shootings do we get in one year? It's not complained about too much when the person involved is confirmed to be a danger to themselves or other people, but what happens when there's a better way, a less dangerous way than shooting? 33-year-old Steven Taylor is the victim this time, and it appears that he might have benefited from a less trigger-happy cop. The cops received a 911 call about a man at a Walmart store with a bat in his hand and attempting to leave it. No, he, he didn't leave the store what yet. What race is he and what does he look like? He's African-American. He's, uh, he's African-American. He's kind of skinny. How old like, does he look? Uh, he's 5'11". He's about like probably like uh, okay. late 20 and late okay. 30. What color shirt yeah. and pants yeah, does he, he have on? He, he has on... Uh, uh, he has on black pants, okay. uh, and black shirt. What color shirt, sir? Uh, black shirt. It's a, it's a don't, don't smoke you, sir. It's like a, it's like a bear on the, on the shirt. Okay. And has he walked out yet? No, he's no, he's also throwing customers right now. The customers are actually trying to help. I guess and he's trying to like. Is he trying to actually steal something or is he in an argument yeah. with another customer? No, he, he, he's actually trying to steal something. He's okay. actually, Did he he's swing actually... the bat at anybody? No, he just has it in the air right now. Officers soon arrive on the scene and find Steven as described. He has a bat in his hand but wasn't doing much else. The cops try to get him to lay the bat down but he wouldn't. He appears to be advancing on the cop instead of complying with the command he was given. <laughs> When he was tased, the taser appears to have no effect at all. He keeps advancing and you can hear the officer commanding him to put it down. A shot rings out and Steven goes to the ground. Watch Steven moments before he was shot. While he was down and bleeding, the officers make no effort to see how much damage had been done or if he's doing okay. Instead, they cuff him. What starts as an innocent routine customer interaction quickly goes south. The clip catches him walking into the store. No issue getting into the store since he looks like every other person. Before committing the crime, it seems like he removed his hat and sweater, hoping for sure to fly under the radar is untraceable. This person makes their way into Walmart with a clear, calculated plan, beelining straight for the jewelry counter. When a customer approaches him, knowing the behavior is abnormal, offering help, they're quickly shoved away. He threatens the employee and they quickly back away, not wanting to engage with a clearly armed and violent individual. He clears out the jewelry counter with what he wants, puts a mask on, and leaves the location rather quickly. Unfortunately for him, most of the comment sections suggest this was probably not the best haul. Is any of the jewelry in Walmart even real? In the early hours of August 2nd, 2022, shoppers at Terra Hot at Walmart were scampered to safety. What was the cause of the disruption? Two men had just walked into the store. One of them had a balaclava covering his face while the other had a gun tucked into his waistband, visible for all to see. First, they paused at the subway aisle. It looks like they were getting a drink and then they make a beeline for the jewelry counter. There's no sign of aggression as they navigate the store. At the jewelry counter, they appear to be enjoying a sightseeing adventure and not making any moves to take items away. From the moment the two men get into the store to the point where they're having a look-see at the jewelry aisle, they didn't confront, threaten, or harm anybody. They appeared to exist alone without interfering with any shopper or employee. The only instance where they had communication with someone else was at the beginning and this looked very much like they knew the individual and were having what should be viewed as a friendly conversation. The police responded quickly to frantic calls from shoppers who feared an active shooter incident. 
The two men were temporarily arrested to defuse the situation and to calm the frayed nerves of other shoppers. You'd expect these two men to be charged to cut, but none of that will be happening because no laws were broken. The police found the gun in the waistband to be a mere pellet gun while there's no law against wearing a mask in a public place. Seeing as no one was threatened, confronted, or harmed, the public prosecutor's office chose not to press any charges, while the lawmakers may have gone on overdrive seeking to make a law that keeps people from wearing full face masks to enter business environments. Shooting incidents are rampant. Oftentimes it all happens so quickly and the cops don't have the slightest chance of stopping the mayhem. In this case, the cops got a heads up and reacted immediately, riding hard to the location, a Walmart store in Tennessee. It was December 23rd, 2020, and the air was alive with the smell of Christmas and the possibility of snow. The officers are on hyper alert from the moment they get the call and as they arrive at the scene, they're immediately at the heart of the issue, rushing into the Walmart to ensure that the people inside are safe. Their direct approach is so because a Walmart employee explained that the possible shooter had gone out back, otherwise we would have witnessed a more measured approach. With the threat level low, the first thing is to make sure they get the people in the store to safety and the officers quickly discuss before getting right to it. Clothing description again. Copy. Clothing description, black male, white shirt, khaki pants. 300, do you copy? Benedict will be holding the grocery side inside. Tinker is holding outside. County is holding general merchandise. Units are gonna start clearing the building. All right, on me, you stay. That's why I know how to do it. That's why I know how to do this, boys. Start on the Let's start on this side. Okay, you on the right, I'm on the left, you start getting the hallways, I'm going to go along and just start trying to get down them, all right? We going straight down this alley here? Straight down. There's only other way I know how to do it. Oh, what do you got? We go from outside in. Outside, you can see all the way down and loop around. We need to clear this. Open door. Hold. Please find it. Kids and other shop owners are escorted out of the mall carefully. Hey guys, come on. Hey, we're here. Come on. These are police officers. Okay. Good job. Good job, guys. All right. Some children were hiding for dear life, and it gives your heart a painful pang when you see their fear. Police department! You're good, you're good. Come on. Come on. What is this thing doing? <laughs> 13, do I have anybody on the grocery side outside? I can send the civilians too. I just leave him here for a minute. We got five. Coming your way. Just come out here for a second. I'm going to escort y'all out. Huh? Our purse. Can it wait? Yeah. I mean, as long as somebody don't get away. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get you guys. I'll walk that back up. Follow me. Suspect in custody over here. Mm -hmm. all, number three, all three. Uh, get with see if you can track down Bruce Belitz's element, and y'all split up and help Matt with clearing duties in there. Uh, let me know who you get. Copy that. If they get off. Don't you copy? Got one of the suspects. All three. three in custody. Anything comes along, I'll be I'm making my way from the electronics up to the hair to get the civilians out. Here, you got anything on you? Six two, we got one of the suspects on the outdoor living side. We have one in custody as of right now. Ten four. Ryan, when you get the civilians cleared out, Robbie, uh, detail somebody to get that suspect. Ten four. Here's the best news of the day. 
No shots were fired from either the police or the reported shooter who was nowhere to be found. For a moment here, things get a little tense just as they always do in situations like this. Get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. Hey, go get out! 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 Get there's a gun out there. We have shares for a post down there. We're on the side. 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 Hey, gun's inside the car somewhere. Your heart will break when you see the man at the end frantically texting on his phone to let his family know that he's okay. We got another four people on their way. Sometime in December 2016, a heinous crime was committed by a man named Mark Heath Lloyd. In the heat of an argument, he whipped out a gun and shot his pregnant ex-girlfriend. Reports say that the argument was about whether or not to keep or abort the baby. The manhunt by Orlando police yielded very little fruit as Mark Heath was nowhere to be found until the 9th of January. On this inauspicious day, Lieutenant Deborah Clayton found herself shopping from the same Walmart as the fugitive, Mark Heath. Watch as they both walk into the Walmart at Princeton Avenue 15 minutes apart. First, Mark Heath walks in, then Deborah arrives minutes later. In the beginning, there's no intersection on their paths. They navigate the store, grabbing the supplies they needed without crossing. Lieutenant Clayton was soon done with her shopping and heads to check out. Lloyd does the same, but on a different counter, and once more, they avoid an intersection. Watch as the police officers arrive at the checkout counter. Here's Lloyd at checkout as well. This is the only point where their paths cross. Just after she'd paid and was heading out of the store with her purchase, Lloyd is making payments himself, but he has his back to the lieutenant and she doesn't get to see the dangerous man in the store. Moments after they both leave the Walmart, Markeith will shoot Lieutenant Deborah Clayton, mortally wounding her. The police will mount a manhunt once more, but the man knows how to hide and will evade capture for another eight days before he's caught. That the suspect popped you ran into the woods. I found the bad guy car. Shots fired. I repeat, shots fired at me. I am not hurt. For his devilry, Mark Heath was sentenced to death. Got one crawling out the front door, guys. It's him. Still wearing body armor. Oh. Lieutenant Clayton's handcuffs are on the suspect. Excellent job, guys. Excellent job. There's only one reason to put CCTV cameras in your store, and for a huge business like Walmart, catching thieves in the act is one of the main reasons. If you ask management, they'll certainly tell you that the cameras have come in pretty handy a few times and ensured that some miscreants didn't get away with their nefarious plans like the people in this video. You can hear the store security woman on the phone with 911, informing them of a suspected robbery about to take place. They've got a cart full and they're um, in a U-Haul truck. And where's the U-Haul? In the parking lot. Credit to her quick thinking, all she had to go with are clips on the security camera as she watches them fill up their cart with several goods and try out several perfumes. It might be her training allowing her to peg these individuals as criminals or simply her instinct. Whatever it is, it was right on the mark as these men can be seen making their way out of the store with everything they've piled onto the shopping cart. Yeah, they're gonna go right now. I gotta go make the apprehension. The alert security woman rushes out after the man with the cart while alerting the police of the situation. What follows next is a long car chase and an apprehension of the thief who managed to run off in the stolen vehicle they had arrived in. The use of force and arrests has been a huge issue throughout history, but only recently has it been heavily criticized. This incident generated a bit of outrage when it was aired, and now you get to watch and make up your own mind about the shoplifter and his arresting officer. Is that an acceptable level of force, or is it too much force? This cop is watching the surveillance footage until his quick eyes catch suspicious behavior. Security personnel are always on the lookout for any form of suspicious behavior. He moves quickly, leaving the back room and making his way to the floor, but the shoplifter was alert as well. He took to his heels and the officer gives chase, following close. Come here, dude! He's going all the way towards the front again. The shoplifter can be heard yelling, I'm sorry, as he runs. I'm sorry, I'm 
The officer finally caught up with him just as he got into his car and slams the door shut. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Get out of the car. I'm sorry. Get out of the car. I only got t-shirts, I only got t-shirts. The shoplifter continues to say he's sorry and adds that he only stole a t-shirt. In his hand, the officer has his taser gun out, ready to use it if the shoplifter fails to comply. The moment the shoplifter starts rummaging in his waistbands for something, the cop whips out his gun. Oh, that's he's down the ground! Things get really tense when the shoplifter continues to rummage through his pocket and the officer, fearing he might have a weapon, points his handgun and commands the man to get on the ground. A t-shirt falls out of the shoplifter's pocket and he goes to the ground. The officer puts the cuffs on him as the man continues to apologize and maintain that he only stole t-shirts. A search of the shoplifter was conducted right there in the parking lot and several t-shirts were found on him. It's surprising how the shoplifter continues to apologize for his behavior throughout the proceedings. You can hear him repeatedly say, I f***ed up. Even as he's loaded into the police cruiser, he has the same words on his lips, often accompanied by an apology. He also confessed that the jacket on him was stolen from Walmart as well. A cop takes his time to explain what happens next, including booking and processing back at the station. If you had just stopped in there and said, okay, I'll give you the stuff back, you would have handed you a summons, you would have walked away. Okay, but because of everything else that escalated, because of you trying to escape and the actions that you took, you have to be processed. Well, I never seen. Would I never seen him. Would, would, would you please continue listening to me? Please don't be rude to me. Uh, I'm not being rude to you. Okay, I'm not okay, yelling okay, at okay, you. I'm sorry. Okay. When you get down to detention, they are going to take your picture, fingerprint you, and if you don't have any warrants, they are most likely going to give you a summons right on the spot. But you are going to be going to detention, whether you want to or not. Okay. It's going to take a couple hours out of your life, but you know what? That's a consequence of your actions, okay? So that being said, the sooner you put your feet in the vehicle and we process this paperwork, the sooner you'll be on your way. Yeah, that's what I heard, please. Sure. Yeah, we, we'll definitely hey, allow it.